Hey friends, before we get into this episode, we wanted to let you know what's happening here. This entire month will be Christmas in July on Girls Gone Hallmark, featuring some movies that we reviewed, but you've never heard. That's right. These reviews appeared exclusively on our Patreon account, but we dug them out from the vault and we're going to celebrate Christmas in July. I got to tell you, Megan, I'm a little bit concerned because I don't know what I said about these movies. (laughs) Oh, you should probably give these episodes a listen, too. (laughs) We hope you enjoy this month on Girls Gone Hallmark. As always, join us in our Facebook group to talk about these movies and these reviews. Enjoy the episode. Hey, Patreon, welcome to a bonus episode of Girls Gone Hallmark. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what we're doing. I know. It's because we do so many things. That's like, we do. Hey, what, what's up? What are we? Where are we at? What are we doing? Who's this for? What day is yep. it? Yes. Today we're disgusting. disgusting. We're disgusting. <laughs> I actually am. I'm still in my pajamas, which I never do. And I put on a beanie and I put my bathrobe over my pajamas because it was cold. Uh, my kids were mortified. But well, I the car. L- let me tell you what I have on. I have on some like really l- loose, soft capri pants. Yeah. And then big socks, which I wore with regular old tennis shoes. Yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a totally loose sweater. I have like super bed head from last night. And I took my daughter to school like this today because I was like, whatever. I'm not getting out of the car. Nobody's going to see me. So. Yeah, same. I'm in my Christmas pajamas in the drop-off line this morning, <laughs> which is pretty unusual for me. I do usually get dressed. We should point out it is pouring rain in Southern California today. So I was like, I can't, I cannot motivate to get up and get ready this morning. Yeah, and everybody is in their cars today. So anybody mm-hmm. who like walks to school is in a car today. It was crazy. It was pandemonium out there. It was, but I did think this would be the morning that I would get in a car accident when I'm in slippers and Christmas pajamas. Oh, I had the same thought because I forgot my phone at home. Oh, no. I was like, this is going to be it. I'm going to get in a car accident and I'm not going to have my phone. Well, we all made it home safely and we're here to talk Sister Swap Christmas in the City. Hey, do you have a synopsis of this movie? I sure do. And it was a really long one. So I just took a couple of like sentences and made it my own. Are you ready? Uh Uh-huh. Meg is helping Jennifer's restaurant staff in Salt Lake prepare for a Christmas competition among local restaurants. With the sisters switching cities leading up to the holiday, they find a new sense of purpose and discover what they both truly need in life and in love. Hey, okay. So when we this we did review Sister Swap a hometown holiday for the main feed. We did a full news and notes about the making of the movie. I I do have a couple new news and notes, but I didn't go into the full. I didn't rehash all of that. Yeah, neither did I. I mean, I just really for my notes, here's a little backstory. I just copy and pasted from our from the first movie. <laughs> and then I found a couple of little like tidbits. So, let me hear what yours is and then maybe they might overlap and they might not. Okay, so I would like to recommend to listeners of the podcast that you find, and I will leave a link. Um, We don't have traditional show notes because this is on Patreon, but in the description box for this episode, I will leave a link. There's a great interview on Seth Meyers with the Williams sisters, and they're charming as hell, and they have so much chemistry together, which we know from watching these movies, but they're just really fun to watch. They tell a funny story about their childhood, and they bring it back to present day. It's like an eight-minute clip. It's just really joy-filled, and um, if you're feeling the holiday blues, I recommend it. Yeah. And the other thing I have is on Twitter, I saw that Ashley Williams had a super adorable watch party. She's in a hotel somewhere. I didn't honestly dig that deep to figure out. She must be in Canada, and I'll tell you why. People who stopped by her hotel room watch party were Nikki DeLoach, Mm -hmm. Brooke Dorsey, Mm -hmm. Autumn Reeser. Like, it's like Hallmark... Everybody's in town to film up. So I 
February the, Valentine party. Maybe me. they're pretty, <laughs> yes, right? So, and one of them um, even had a mask on, and I wondered if she was in technically in quarantine because she's prepping for a movie. Anyway, it just made me happy. It just kind of was like, I wish I were a part of this community. They just looked like they were having fun and goofing off, and um, there was no, like, pretense about it. They were all in pajamas and taking these, like, terrible blurry selfies, and <laughs> it brought me joy. I think maybe I'm in the part of the holiday season where I'm like, Oh, everything's so nice. We recorded an episode for our main feed yesterday where we talked about our holiday traditions, and that will already be up as this episode goes up. That episode is actually already up. And it just felt good to talk about like all those things that we do and to kind of take that hour to talk about that. I was like, that's even when we're in the middle of it and we're wrapping like crazy and shopping and running around. It was kind of nice to have that moment of, oh, yeah, this is what's coming. So I think I'm maybe on like a holiday high these days. I don't know. Really? I mean, give me a minute. I'll be crabby as hell. I am just ready for it to wrap up. Like, I think it's because like these movies started in October, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) And I've watched so many more like holiday movies than I ever have. And then on top of that... Is like real life Christmas stuff. It's just, right. you know, I just, it feels like it's been months. So I'm just ready for it to finish. Yeah. <laughs> I have a confession. I watched this movie this morning. Shut. What time did you get up? I started it at 6.30 a.m. Oh, my goodness. So when I texted you last night, you really didn't had know what I was watched. talking about. No, oh, I didn't. I realized this morning. But... Um, our intention was to watch it yesterday, and then we ended up watching a movie with the kids, and I was going to watch it after that, and I was too tired, so I got up this morning. Now, I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to be mad, but I'm I'm ready. I'm prepared, so. Why would I be mad? I don't care. <laughs> There's, you know, here's a confession. There's been times that I haven't even watched the entire movie, and I come here and review it, so. I'll never tell which one it was, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get this popping. Oh, I did have, well, this is not really breaking news and notes here, but uh, we did already know from the previous movie that these movies were filmed back to back. Yeah. Though this new note I saw was that particular scenes were shot from multiple angles so that they could be used in both movies, which kind of makes sense now seeing the second movie when we saw, like, repeat scenes. You know what I mean? So it gives them, like, a slightly different feel, right. even though they're ultimately the same content. Right. Exactly. Uh-huh. And then also in this movie, it stars Keith Robinson. He plays Joe, the love interest of Meg. Yeah. And I, like, I've never seen this dude before, so I looked him up on IMDb. He has over 72 acting credits. Wow. A lot of, like, shows I've never heard of or never seen. Um, the only real big standout was 2008's Dream Girls with Beyonce oh. and what's her name? She was on American Idol. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah. Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. Well, that's, I liked him. I would not mind seeing more of him in future Hallmark movies. And I, I have some thoughts okay. about him and Meg oh, together. Oh, yes. But I enjoyed him. Like, yes. I thought he had like a megawatt smile I really yes. enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. What was your first impression of this movie? I would like to apologize to Kimberly Williams Paisley, who I thought was super intolerable in the first movie. It seems that Ashley Williams is maybe the most intolerable. (laughs) You know, I was watching this movie and I was wondering if that was going to be your take because (laughs) Ashley Williams is at like a level level 11 in this movie like seriously she's she's high octane the entire time now (laughs) i actually found this movie quite charming and almost perhaps with one exception i did not think the love story was better than hometown holiday i did overall like the feel of this movie better what i thought the cast chemistry now, Mark Declan, Mark Declan, Mark Declan, Mark Declan, the chemistry between Kimberly Williams Paisley and Mark Declan, their love story, a thousand times better. But I did really get like a lovey, homey feel for this cast. I don't know. Holiday oh, high, guys. Yeah. Holiday high. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I've got like 800 likes. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Go for it then. <laughs> 
Well, first, I like that we get a non-home movie Kevin Nealon. We get yes. actual Kevin Nealon scenes. Not and a lot. Not a lot. No, but I'm going to tell you my wish right now because I think it's relevant to the Kevin Nealon comment. And my wish is I listened after we recorded our thoughts on a hometown holiday. I listened to Deck the Hallmark thoughts on hometown holiday. Mm-hmm. And this, they suggested... And I agree that perhaps these movies should have been done as a two-parter and they should run concurrently. So rather than getting beginning to end, rewind, beginning to end, we get beginning to middle, middle to end. Uh, Because I think it would have made the movie richer as opposed to going, wait, what's happening in the other scene and the other with the other sister? We get them back to back. So we get them simultaneously. Now. I understand the flaws in that plan, and I understand from a Hallmark standpoint, you want your leading lady and your leading man, and you want your self-contained love story, and I get all of that. I think no matter how you do it, you have the issue of these two movies needing to be watched back to back for them to make sense. I agree. I thought prior to these movies coming out, we had heard an interview or read an interview that Kimberly Williams Paisley said, or one of the sisters said, like, oh, you don't have to watch both movies to know what's going on. You could just jump into one or the other, but I think that's false. I think you're not going to get a full picture. You're just Mm going to get these, whatever the other sister's storyline is, it's going to be really mild. Now, could I have followed the Ashley Williams storyline in this movie without having seen the other one? Yes, of course. But you don't get the fully fleshed out picture of what's happening behind the scenes and why the scene in the movie theater is so powerful like that wouldn't land if you hadn't Mm -hmm. seen everything happening with Jen and her plight to save the movie theater. So I think you could follow them. I don't think they're as rich without each other. Agree. Agree. We watched the first movie. One of your wishes was for more backstory. Like, we didn't really know what was going on. I think we get a little bit more of that. I think I understand Meg's character a lot more having yeah. watched this movie and yeah, where they're all coming from. Which, again, I think is an argument for maybe this is a two-parter as opposed to two different perspectives. You know, I don't know. I like what Hallmark tried. I'm glad that they're doing something different. I just tweeted something this morning that I think Hallmark has leveled up this year. And I think one of the reasons that they had to level up is they had this really comfortable position as the Christmas movie people. And when people talk about, like, feel-good Christmas movies, they kind of use Hallmark Christmas movies the way you would use, like, Kleenex, right? Like, it's Uh a brand name. Yeah. Well, now this year we've got something like 150 streaming on TV holiday movies. Every platform has a movie. Many platforms have many movies. And Hallmark had to step up their game in order to be the best in the business. And I do think they get the lion's share of the ratings. I think they did a good job. Now, is every movie a winner? It's not. But I think they stepped it up. I'm glad they tried something different. I like the idea. I just think there's some some flaws in the plan. Sure. I did you I like th- anything? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I I have a, a little list. Okay. Um I will tell you that when I turned this movie on, when I settled in to watch it the other night, I was excited. Yeah. I, it felt like a comfortable experience, mm-hmm. meaning like I knew it was a I knew the characters, you know? Like I yeah. was like, oh, okay, this is great. I'm gonna watch like it felt like a sequel or something. Anyway, I liked both this movie and the first movie a lot. So mm-hmm. let me just say that. So I was really excited. I was excited to see, like, how Meg's side of things unfolded. And now, do did it reach my level of, like, how much I liked the other movie? No, I don't think so. But I did like it. So let me just say that. Now, I had said that Meg was a lot. Uh huh. In my first impression. But what I did like about her is that she was never fully discouraged by things. And she was always up for something. Like at one point he goes, you want to go on a road trip? Of course she's going to say yes. Like her face lit up. She was like super excited. I was like, kind of found that a little bit like I was like envious of her. Like, you know, me, I'd be like, oh, we can't do that because we blah, 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 blah. like I just yep. love that. She just like jumped <laughs> into things like that was really cool. I liked her. I liked her character. I liked her as a person, you know. Very inspiring, I thought. 
And she's so pretty to look at. Like, her eyes are just so beautiful. And she has, like, flawless skin. I just, and these rosy cheeks. Like, she's so pretty to look at. I mean, I said Ashley Williams is a damn delight. I know that she was a lot in this movie. But I think she was a lot in the right ways for a Hallmark movie. Mm, Yeah. Okay. There's some funny lines in this movie. Like, Joe's like, you're sort of the town busybody, aren't you? Like, (laughs) she was just... (laughs) I just thought that was funny. I liked that he called her out. Now, we've seen lots of movies that have cookie decorating. And Mm -hmm. there was an earlier movie this season where they're decorating cookies for a client. And it's like straight up like I would decorate them in my kitchen, which is to say that they would look terrible. Mm -hmm. And they had beautiful cookie decorating. Like, thank you for investing the time into either someone having them done professionally or having someone come teach you the techniques they weren't using like Pillsbury frosting out of a can they were using like actual royal icing it was I appreciated that like if they're going to give away these cookies they were beautiful I know but seriously the her reindeer cookie was like so detailed it was like that would take you an hour to make were you going to get 12 cookies done in like a full day I mean, the entire staff was doing it. They apparently had nothing better to do. <laughs> yes, but but I would say that the other staff skills were probably not as good as hers and whatever. Anyway, I agree. Compared to the other movie we saw, <laughs> slapping all the frosting. Right. Yeah, I loved, loved, loved that they wanted to make a free grocery store at the food bank. Yeah. Now, I know this isn't like, like a... I know it was part of the movie, but it's like, it's not really a takeaway. But the takeaway for me is I had never thought about that before. Like a free grocery store for people who need it. And then there's Mm -hmm. like no shame around it. Like just come and get what you need. And it feels normal, you know, normal quote, like whatever. Right. You're going to the grocery store for your family. I think there's a that feels different than picking up a box of food that's being handed to you. Exactly. And they did something similar in that in that Netflix show made. I don't think you watched it. I watched it. She was like she was in a domestic violence shelter uh-huh. and they had a like free store of clothing and it was made to be look like a boutique. You would go in there and get what you need and it wasn't like, oh, here's a grocery bag of clothes to wear, you know? Right. And I like the idea of like restoring their dignity. Yes. They should have the opportunity to choose what they're going to wear and choose what they're going to eat as opposed to it's free. Be grateful. Right. Right. I just loved it. I just love that they put that in a Hallmark movie. I just love yeah. it. Ooh, our lights just flickered. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hopefully we don't lose power. <laughs> I loved when Joe brought coffee to Meg and she's like, what, not hot cocoa? And he's like, I love hot cocoa. But how come in December everyone shoves hot cocoa on me? Like, am I not allowed to be caffeinated in the month of December? There were a lot of funny lines, right? Yeah, that was cute. Yeah, I liked I liked them. I thought Alex and Martin were adorable. Oh, so do I. I have it here, too. I like the story of Alex and Martin. That was really cute. And that's what I texted Megan last night. I was like, have we ever seen a same-sex kiss on a Hallmark movie? And she said, yes, we saw it last season with Christmas House, which is a movie I didn't watch. So I saw a tweet or an Instagram post from Jonathan Bennett, who is in that movie and is one half of that kiss. And apparently the jackets that they were wearing are in the Smithsonian as the because that was the first same-sex kiss on the Hallmark channel. Get out! So, yeah, so it was... Serendipitous that you asked me that question yesterday because I'm not sure that I would have known that that was the first on the channel, having not just seen that reminder. I would have guessed it, but I wouldn't have known for sure if I hadn't seen that. Look, I was stoked. Bravo, Hallmark. Yeah. Let's keep going in that in that direction. We had what movie was it? It was the Unexpected Christmas where his sister Becca was in a same sex relationship. Like, let's yeah, let's keep going. I'm stoked for it. There, the ice skating scene. Yes, with the mistletoe arch. Yes. I thought that was honestly really adorable. So we I we have, I believe that's where we have Alex and Martin's first kiss. And then there we have their cute like scene where like they kiss, uh, I believe her name's Kate, on the cheek in the mistletoe. And then Meg and Joe end up under there and it's a little like awkward. But when they she's left standing under there and they push the mistletoe back, I just thought that was a well shot scene where she's kind of like standing there and she does not get her mistletoe mm. moment. 
I don't know if I watched it that closely, but <laughs> I'll go back and watch it because I did really like this movie. I would watch it again. I'd watch both movies again. So it's a really, honestly, for Hallmark, a powerful scene where she's just left standing. The staff comes and pushes the arch back up against the wall, and she's still just standing there by herself after mm. Joe has skated away. The final thing I liked about this movie was the storyline of reconciliation between Frank and his daughter. Yeah. I'm going to add a what I wished for with this because it's relevant is that I wish for more of this storyline. I yep. wish that we had a deeper understanding of why they had a falling out, why they needed reconciliation. But I was so moved at the end that he was so moved by the kindness of people in his community that he wanted to invest into the food bank. I just thought that it was like a lovely, like full circle moment. Yeah. Well, and we have talked about how we would like more sister swap movies like a spring movie, or yeah. at least we think the door's open. And I think we have enough going on with these other characters. Like, we can see more of Alex and Martin. We can see more of Frank and his daughter. We can see more of what's going on with these other people in the community. I think there's enough left open there. I definitely think so. And if you think back to the first movie, like, there's there's more story with her parents, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted to do something else. There's more story with, like, uh, Mark Declan. I can't remember his character name, but of their relationship. So, right. well, you did see at the very end that it said more to come, right? Oh, I didn't see that. What? That was like a when big When they thing. freeze frame on them? At the very, very end of it. You must have just, like, dipped out when it was over. <laughs> I saw, like, they freeze framed on the girls. Yes, and it said something at the bottom about, like, more to come. Oh, I yeah. didn't even notice. Yes. Yeah, so. I was just like... It was 8.56 and I came upstairs and <laughs> climbed into the closet. So there's two more things that I liked. I loved that we had assumed that these two movies would end in the same place. And I honestly assumed that we would go full circle and we would end right with them sitting in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And I love that we get an extra 10 minutes, that we get an additional ending, that there's more, that as much as these movies shared that they went and finished off this first movie. And I think that ending scene is so fantastic. Like, there's so many great things about it. And the photo booth, when Meg and Joe were in there and they have their cute photo booth kiss and he starts talking and she says, shh, kissing. And I thought it was a really cute kiss. As much <laughs> as I didn't feel like they had a ton of chemistry in this movie, mm -hmm. I thought that moment was really sweet. And then they come out of the photo booth and she kisses them again and then goes running off to her sister. <laughs> and I thought that was so real. Like, I just kissed him, but they're not like, we're married and running off in the sunset together. It's yeah. just like the beginning of this fun new thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, because I thought when like she ran out to her sister, I was like, really? Like, these are adults. But then you make a good point. Like, Joe and Meg are not getting married tomorrow. Like, it right. was like a fun new flirty like thing that's happening and she wanted to tell her sister. Yeah. Yeah. I got like it. Yeah. I hear you. So that is my extensive list of things that I liked about this Okay. Movie. Let's talk about what you wished for. Well, I really dove into mine. I just, I'm not sure what the ideal format for this movie was, but I do think I would like the stories told concurrently as opposed to beginning to end, rewind, mm -hmm. beginning to end. That's my big wish. I hear you. I... I think I was a little bit disappointed, like, watching this movie and going, oh, this is the same scene I saw in the movie mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. you know? I get why they had to do it. Maybe could have been executed differently. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, though. The end of this movie, are we supposed to believe that this happens after their scene at the movie theater? That's my understanding, because that happened earlier, than the end of this movie. But like, are we talking we like a day earlier or? <laughs> yeah, I, maybe. I, the timelines are always weird in these movies. I don't know. But we see that scene where they decide to work together and then there's still 10 more minutes of this movie. Oh, I don't even remember seeing. Oh, you're right. They were on the. That's right. That's right. They were sitting on the counter again. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You're right. Okay. Never mind. Here's something I wished for. I needed Meg to dial it way back. Like, it was almost like toxic positivity. Like, it was too, too, <laughs> too, too much. It, I found it distracting at times, to be honest. Like, I was just like, whoa, Meg, like, let's have a different, like, emotion other than, like, 
level 12, right? There yes. was one scene, and it's when Joe basically tells her that it's not going to work out between them because she hasn't figured out, like, what she wants. Uh-huh. And it looks like she's been punched in the gut. Like, she yeah. makes, like, such a face. And then, like, and then she, like, switches it back to, like, a smile and then, like, finding, like, you know, something positive out of the situation. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, even when they go to ask that woman to be their chef and he's like, what if she says no? She's like, then we eat our feelings. Like, yeah. she's just like, <laughs> I'm so happy all the time. Yeah. I, I do know people like that. And I'm so prone to being like, oh, well, this sucks. And I would like to wallow with the fact that this sucks. That that I would have a hard time being around a person like her because I need someone who can, like, get into the muck with me. For sure. Because <laughs> then I feel like if I get into it and the other person's like, well, we're just going to bright side this whole thing, then my feelings feel invalid and, mm-hmm. like, I should be turning my frown upside down. And yeah. sometimes I need to just go through it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't do that to you, right? Oh, my gosh. No, you get in the muck. That's okay, cool. <laughs> you know what? I do have one more wish. Yeah. Was Mark Declan in this movie at all? I never saw him. Neither did I. Why wouldn't he come to the party? Right? Yeah. Or like we couldn't have seen him at the movie theater at some point. She's there. She's at the Christmas tree lighting. We They... You know he's there for those scenes because those were filmed at the same time. I just needed a little peek. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, you mentioned this earlier, but I thought Meg and Joe were kind of a mismatch. Like, they had, like, no chemistry, like, to me as a viewer. I thought they made, like, great working partners. Yeah. Because they were so, like, opposites. But in terms of, like, romantic partners, I was like, I don't really see it. I didn't feel it either until until they kissed. And I was like, oh, that's very cute. But well, it was so funny because he goes into the photo booth like alone with a Christmas hat and a poinsettia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, what's he doing? He's taking solo pictures and they're all by himself <laughs> with a poinsettia plant. OK. All right, dude. That was funny. OK, here's the last thing I wished for. Uh huh. I needed less of that childhood choreographed dance between Meg and Jennifer. Like, they did it in the movie theater, and then Mm -hmm. they did it on the dance floor at this party. You know, they showed it one too many times in the movie theater. One of my Did You See That's, and this is from the first movie, too, and I don't know why I didn't mention it then, is... Does an entire town of people want to come and watch this family's old home movies? Because... (laughs) No, I can see it being a 30 second tribute at the beginning of whatever they're going to show, because obviously this was a family owned movie theater and they really loved their uncle. But I don't need I am not coming to an event to watch someone else's home movie. I do not care how close this town is. Yeah, I agree. So, yes, I think there was one too many cutesy throwback. Those girls were cute, but I think they they overdid it. Yeah, I agree. All right. Did you have any of it? Did you see that? Because I, I have do. a few. Okay. I I'm so excited. <laughs> you are? Yes. Yes. Uh-oh. Okay. Did you see Tyler Hines? No, I'm just kidding. He wasn't. Oh, my gosh. Did I miss a big one? No. No, nothing like that. <laughs> no, mine are all very small. But first of all, in the scene where the sisters are sitting in Jen's house and they're wrapping gifts, Ashley Williams is definitely wrapping an empty tube of paper. She's, she's like, wrapping a tube of paper? Like, she's rolled up wrapping paper. She's, like, taken wrapping paper and kind of rolled it into a tube. And then she's, like, folding it over. There's nothing inside there. It oh, is weird. a roll of paper that she's, like, <laughs> just rolled up. And she's folding it over itself. There's nothing. At least Jen's character is wrapping a box. Like, give this woman a box to wrap. Just, But no. <laughs> it's it's no, There's nothing in there. No, totally did not even notice that. No. When Alex takes Meg to the, like, pop-up tapas cart. Oh, yeah. They're talking. She's like, what are tapas? Or I don't know, whatever. And they show a sandwich board of the options. And one of them is, potato, like, rosemary and potatoes. And potatoes is spelled P-O-T-A-T-O-S. Oh, no. So the... 
woman who runs the food bank, Ashley, yes. Ashley, Meg, she's like, just send over your donor list. Hey, you cannot just take someone's email list and randomly email them. That is an A, that's not how digital privacy works. And also, your donors are going to be pissed. Like, could you, the food bank, send them an email saying, hey, this business is having a fundraiser that has the potential to support us? Yes, you can do that. Can you just give your email list away? No, you cannot. <laughs> You're, so, yeah. You're really in those details, huh? Oh, I used to be in nonprofit fundraising. Okay, Marianne, the woman who works at the food bank. Every scene she's in, she's wearing a horrible Christmas sweater. One is said like meowy Christmas with a cat <laughs> on it. Every single one. And I was like, bravo to wardrobe who like nailed it when they thought, what does a community service leader wear who, you know, wants to be festive all the time for the people who are coming into her, you know, her spot. Like totally. It was so every single scene. It was so (laughs) funny. (sighs) So at one point their RSVP list overwhelms the capacity of the restaurant. And they're like, where could we host it? Why would you host a restaurant event anywhere other than your restaurant? Know, and why does your RSVP system not have a max where you're like, sorry, we can only sell 50 tickets to this event? Yeah, that was dumb. That was a dumb part. <laughs> also, that straight up looks like Evite. Like when they pull it up on their phones, oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, look, you got your Evite response. <laughs> yeah, because like you wouldn't, if you're cooking food in your own restaurant, you're not going to like then bring that. It's just... It's, makes it a logistical nightmare, which leads to my, this is my new question and answer section under Did You See That, (laughs) is why would the restaurant take all the food to the food bank for the party that was then canceled, and then they move all that stuff to another location for like a free-for-all party? Yeah, that food's cold and disgusting. Why wouldn't they keep it at the food bank for the people who need it? When they'd be like, okay, party's off, but we have all this food here. Let's open our doors to the community and be like, come on in. Come, come get some food. Yeah, why didn't they call all of the other restaurants and say, hey, come over, bring your food. We'll serve it to the community. Yeah. That's a great question. Now, were all these community members invited to come? Like all the people that would attend the food bank? I don't know. I know they wanted this big moment with that big elaborate poinsettia display, but... Uh I don't know. The entry of that hotel, I don't know where they are, whatever that space is, but the entry is so lackluster when they walk in. It's like a plain staircase with a single strand of lights around it. There's (laughs) nothing there until you turn around and you see the display. Like, it seems like they could have dressed that up a little bit, especially because they walk through that space more than once. It's all that for that red display on the other side of the room yeah it was weird Mm. it was weird and then here's another question so the weather's bad right and that's why the party was canceled Mm -hmm. but who moved the photo booth and the cookie decorating (laughs) station and all that stuff to the new location in the bad weather like it didn't it didn't make any sense no it no Though I did enjoy when, like, her family shows up and he's like, we're mountain people. We know how to put (laughs) chains on our tires. And I was like, all right, right, okay, okay, okay. I mean, it snows a lot. It's a ski resort. So it's not like these people are not used to snow. Um, Lots of digital snow in this movie. Too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. It doesn't constantly need to be snowing on you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) One of the scenes... From the Seth Meyers interview, they show that they, because it was hot, they had made a snowman. They're like, yeah, we were getting, like, snow, like ice from the fish market or something. And um, they had to put an umbrella over their snowman to keep him from melting. (laughs) Oh, really? That's really funny. That's all I got. Me too. Woohoo! What did you rate this movie? Okay, I want to just first preface this with saying that I gave the first movie three and a half stars. I I gave this three stars. I liked the story better in the first one, and I liked the romantic story better between Mark Declan and Kimberly Williams Paisley. I think this is a three-star movie for me as well, which is a very high rating. And it was warm and cozy and maybe 3.25 stars. I really loved the staff at the restaurant. Yeah, they were funny. It was They were like a... 
more than background, you know? They were like a family, like when yeah. they all go volunteer together. And I, yeah, and that part when she's like, when the chef turns it down, the job down. And he, yeah. she's like, why wouldn't he want to be with these people? Oh, there's another, did you see that? In the first movie, we see in both of these movies where they go to, uh-huh, they go to Martin's food stand with both Jen and Meg to ask him to be the chef. Uh-huh. Prior to going there in this Christmas in the City move, movie, we hear Meg on the phone with somebody, I don't know who, saying, I need a copy of last year's Great Salt article that my sister wrote. And then we hear Martin, are you Jen? I don't remember her last name. Yeah. You wrote that article about community and food service. I, I'm blowing it. And I was like, wait a minute. That was a total plant. Like, I kind of. I think it's obviously supposed to be funny that he, like, knew exactly what to say to her. Yeah. And that we get that information in this movie. But also I was like, wait, but the whole point is you are supposed to believe in that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this bonus episode. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye. Bye.